Welcome to MOOC course on introduction to proteogenomics. While it is not very difficult to generate big data sets currently using mass spectrometry or NGS platforms, but data storage, data processing, data analysis is not very easy. And in this light cloud computing has provided some hope in which way big data can be handled. In this light the last lecture Dr. Mani has given you introduction about fire cloud. From the last lecture it was clear that fire cloud allows users to set up the data analysis using customized workflows across multiple hardware platforms. It also allows the users to use several paths for running the pipeline which includes the direct invocation using command line or through any other pipeline service. Today Dr. Mani is going to give you a demonstrations for using fire cloud and in which way you can analyze your data even if it is very big data set using this platform. So, let us welcome Dr. Mani for today's demonstration session. So, if you type firecloud.org it will go to the home page site which kind of shows the same picture that I have showed you 4 times, but it will also have uh, these other. So, if you want to start using fire cloud you click on use fire cloud, but I want to point out the other things that they that are on the page. So, there is a user guide. So, if you click on that it will give you um, a, a lot of information on how to use fire cloud. There is also a user guide for Widdle which you can access separately. And so, um, the, a lot of documentation has been reasonably well written for this. Uh, there is a blog that announces new updates or when the system is not working or there are maintenance and things like that the blog has like updates that you can follow. Uh, but the cool thing is the forum. So, the people who actually created fire cloud and who are working on all the algorithms respond to questions if you have any. So, you go to the forum I think to use the forum you have to log in. Uh, so, you have to create a user ID and log in. But once you log in you, you can see what others have asked and what responses you have and like David was saying yesterday a lot of the questions that you encounter when you start using it somebody has already encountered and then there will be an answer that you can quickly you, uh, look up. But if there is not and your question is unique to your problem and you are, you are encountering some bug that you need to have them fix then you can post on the forum and then somebody will respond usually within a few hours. Well, maybe here it might be half a day because when you post now they are all sleeping. So, and so when you click on use fire cloud it goes into the it goes to the fire cloud main page this is a portal page. If you type portal.firecloud.org you would end up at this page directly. And so, you can see you have to log in to use it. Um, you can use your Google ID to log in I think mine is already set up. So, it just went in. Um, and I think you have to use only a Google ID to log in. I do not think you can use anything else. So, the main page looks like this and if you read the top red bar that comes up as a warning for me it is saying my NIH controlled access data um, permission has expired. So, controlled access data has the um, uh, identifiable data with uh, uh, genomic SNPs that I just mentioned previously. In order to access that data you need special permission from the NIH. So, you have to say why do I want access to it and what project am I going to use that data for and so you have to apply and then they will um, look at your application and say ok you are now authorized to uh, access this data. So, when I click on this relink it will take me to a login page where if I log in correctly it knows I am authorized and then it will enable me to access those uh, uh, data. But after a month the um, authorization will expire and you have to reauthorize yourself in fire cloud. The NIH authorization is usually valid for a year. So, this is the kind of security I was talking about. If you downloaded the data to your institute then your institute is responsible for making sure that people who access the data are authorized to access it. But here fire cloud implements a uniform process for everybody and you do not have to worry about it now. And then you can see three main tabs here one says 
So one says workspaces, the other says data library and the third one says a method repository. So a, a workspace is where you are doing your analysis. So it has a set of methods, it has your data and it has your configuration for the methods, whatever inputs you want to give for your methods. The data library has publicly available data, so the CPTAC data is available, the genomics TCGA data is available, all those data are available in the data library and you can use it for your analysis or you can just look at it or you can download it. But if you have to download it, I think you need an account because it costs money. Uh, and then finally, there is the method repository which has methods that everybody has written. So some methods are public, then you can see those. Some methods are shared, so the a method author will say, okay, you can look at it and they will give you permission and you can look at it and some methods are private, only the authors can see. And whoever writes a method can control what the access uh, privileges are for that method. So if it is a method you are still testing and you are not sure works very well, you would most likely keep it private. But then once it has been tested and you are using it in a project in your group, then people in your group might be, might have access to that method. And ultimately when your paper is released, you would make it public. So you, you can change the access anytime and you can control who has access to methods you have written. Um, so I will pick a workspace and we can take a look at it. So let me see. So you see there is this workspace that is called CPTAC PGDAC production pipeline. So that is our collection of pipelines for the proteogenomic data analysis, uh, the, the, all the CPTAC uh, projects for which we do proteogenomics. And you can see that it says restricted, that is because only people at the broad uh, currently have access to it. So if you click on that, this is the summary page, so that it says summary. This is the summary page for that workspace. So you can see the workspace has data, it has analysis, it has notebooks, it has method configurations and when a process is running you can monitor what is happening to it. And here on the left side um, it says that the last process run has completed successfully which is green. If it did not complete successfully you will have a, a red triangle and the whole thing will be red. You can share the workspace with others, uh, you can edit it, you can make a copy of it and experiment with it if you want or you can just delete it or let us say you have published your paper and you do not want any changes made to this workspace, you can lock it. So if you lock it, nothing can be changed in the workspace but people can copy it and do stuff with it. And then it says who has access, who owns it, who are authorized users, so this is all uh, basically access related stuff. And then here it is showing me how much it cost to run it. So uh, you can see, uh, I think this one has no data in it, so there is no monthly cost. If you had data files stored, then they will be charging you some um, a fee for storing the data on a continual basis. And then, um, so this is the billing detail, if you click on this it will show you uh, how much uh, uh, how much you have used in the last whatever time, time frame for storage compute, you can get a lot of details there. Um, but the, the thing I wanted to point out is the Google bucket. So every workspace has a Google bucket associated with it and this is the address of the Google, Google bucket associated with this workspace. So if I click on it, actually uh, fine, let me click on it. So. Accessing a bucket is again uh, based on permissions, you have to have the uh, permissions to access the bucket. <coughs> so this is your bucket. So basically it is saying there are no objects in this bucket. So because this is a workspace we set up to just store methods so that when we need to do a real analysis, we copy the methods from here into a new workspace, put the data in the new workspace and do it because every time you get different data or slightly modified data. So you have breast cancer, you need breast cancer data. You made some changes, you have new version of breast cancer data. You want to apply it to ovarian cancer, you have ovarian cancer data. So usually the data changes and with that the settings used to run the methods also change. And so we keep the methods in this workspace and then copy it to a new workspace to apply it. So before going to our actual analysis workspace, 
I want to point out the, the methods that we have. So, here are the methods. So, each line here is one pipeline. So, you can see there is a main pipeline. So, this is the basic pipeline that runs a lot of proteogenomic analysis and these are all the inputs to that. Many of them are optional and do not have to specify anything, but some of them you have to specify as input. So, like the input data set for example, without that you cannot run an analysis. So, things like that you have to specify and here the snapshot is the version of that method. If you made a modification and you uploaded the method again, the snapshot will change to 6. So, it will keep track of all the changes you have made and you can revert back to old, old methods if you want to. So, let us say you have made some change and then you realize that was that actually introduced a bug and you do not want to use that snapshot, you can go back to an older one. And when you click on the there is this thing called middle and if you click on expand it will show you the actual workflow for that um, a pipeline. So, you can see there is a task called pgdac association, it has some inputs and outputs, then there is another uh, task called CNA correlation report, CNA copy number analysis, consensus clustering, uh, this is for like harmonizing data, normalizing mass spec data, then a report for that. So, basically all the tasks that you would need in order to start with pre-processed genomics data and pre-processed proteomics data and then do like a proteogenomic analysis uh, uh, replicating a lot of things that was uh, reported in the breast cancer nature paper are, are included in this pipeline. So, I will actually show you uh, and, and then so these are all the task descriptions and at the end of it is the workflow. So, you can see it says workflow main pipeline those are all the inputs some of them are optional, but others are required and then here you say you start by parsing the spectrum mill table, the output of that goes into normalization, the output of that goes into report creation and so on. So, you just go in sequence in uh, uh, for how the, the workflow goes. If there is no dependence you, you can execute them in parallel ok. So, and um, the method repository has all the methods that we have generated available. So, these are all the pipelines and workflows. So, there is outlier analysis from David Fenio and Kelly Ruggles lab that is available here. This is the main pipeline. This is the connectivity map analysis that was also reported in the paper and there are many others. So, I think Karsten's uh, PTM uh, GSCA is also somewhere here, maybe on the next page. Yeah, SSGSEA. So, all the uh, methods are here and you can use any of them you, in you can. So, this is the method repository. When you create your workspace, you can import any methods you want and then put your data there and, and, and apply the methods to that data. So, let us look at one workspace where we have actually done an analysis. So, I will do the so, this is the new breast cancer data which is uh, we call the prospective data set and you see I have version 2, version 1 was had some differences and now we updated it. So, now here if I go to, so you can also see that I ran 20, ran this many uh, 20 uh, pipelines in this workspace, 2 of them aborted due to problems, 18 of them were done, were finished. If I go to the Google bucket. So, now you can see there are a lot of folders in the bucket and when you run a, a pipeline, the output is written in a bucket that is named like this. So, this is like a long set of hexadecimal characters so that you do not have like the same file uh, for directory name or folder name. So, it, it creates a unique name every time with some long set of, uh, but you do not have to keep track of it, it will automatically know which uh, folder was used for which uh, task and then copy the uh, right output to where it needs to go. So, but it will write all the outputs to the bucket that you have for the for the work workspace. But the important thing to uh, note is this thing called input here. 
So that is where all the input data is. So if I click on that it will show what input data I have. So I have RNA seq data, I have acetylome, phosphoproteome, proteome, uh, I have some groups that I want to look at for a look for enrichment when I do my clustering. Uh, this is for uh, the connectivity map analysis, this is the copy number data and then if you want to change some of the configurations of the pipeline there is a configuration file you can use. The experiment design file is the most important one which associates samples with various uh, annotations for the samples and also says which uh, TMT run had a specific sample in which channel. Uh, and so, this is basically all the data that you would need as input is here and in your uh, workspace you would in the method configurations because this is one that we are using for actual analysis the methods will be configured. So, if you look at the proteome uh, analysis pipeline you can see the optional uh, things are, are not filled in, but if you look at so, look at this analysis directory. So, this actually points to data in the metadata table. So, when it says this dot whatever I think it is getting cut off because the resolution is, is too low, uh, but you can see that many of these are filled in with values and where so some of them are actual numbers or strings like, like this one for example is a string, but many of them start with this. So, the, the those are obtained from a metadata table that kind of says for the proteome what are my uh, input data sets and what are my input files that I need to use. For the phosphoproteome the table will specify what input files I need to use. So, for each of these you will have like a specification of inputs and when you run the method it will ask you ok which participant should I use the proteome, phosphoproteome which one. And when you pick proteome it will get the right inputs it will do the proteome analysis and the output will be also in one of these files. So, I think so there is a there is an output table that is written out somewhere here or you can look at go to monitor it will show you all the analyses that have been run. So, this one for example was a proteome analysis that we did if we look at it it will tell you what all happened in the proteome analysis. So, this was the proteome analysis, it will tell you what the inputs are. So, all the files and uh, parameters that were used as input, it will tell you what the outputs are. So, there is one output file which is like a zip file that has all the outputs from the various uh, tasks that were run, but there are also reports that, that you have that will show you in, in a, on a web page many times in an interactive web page on some of the results that were obtained. And then these are all the tasks that were run, it's, it's in um, it is not in the order they were run, but these were all the tasks that were run and you can also see the timing. So, it will show you which tasks were run when. So, you started off by doing the parsing the spectrometer table, normalizing and then doing the normalization report, RNA protein correlation and so forth and you can see how long each one takes and the association analysis takes the longest and after that you do consensus clustering and then you are done. So, it gives you a visual picture of how the uh, entire flow was executed. And the data library basically has various data sets I would not go into that now. So, you can you can see that there is lot of uh, data that you can use from there. I think that is kind of all I wanted to show. In today's demonstration session, you are given the concepts that in which way FireCloud could use three main tabs, the workspaces, data library and method repository. The workspaces let the user create their own pipeline, the data library contains publicly available data that can be also used by the user, the method repository it contains the methods used by different users. These methods are also available for any user 
using cloud computing platforms. Once you have submitted your job, the user can now visualize the various steps involved including the input files and the output files. I hope it at least gives you the glimpse of in which way the big data can be handled using cloud computing platforms. Some of the shown tools and platform currently are not available for the public usage, but hopefully Broad Institute will make it available online in some time. At least you should be aware that these are the good resources in which way you can analyze your data using cloud computing. Thank you.